Welcome to Flash Tutorial 68, Trajectory Adjustable Power. It's a follow-up to Tutorial 67, which was Trajectory Using Action Script. And that's what I have opened on my computer now. I want to start by making sure all the layers are locked. Open this first Action Script frame. And I'm going to add two more variables. Type, 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 type. One is called shoot x with a capital S. And it's a number, colon number equals 3. Actually, want to make that 4. And variable shoot y, colon number, it's equal to 50. And they're going to allow us to control the mount, what we're calling the power for this ball that we're shooting. Let's copy this shoot x. Copy that. It's equal to 4. And let's come down the page. And down here where I have this 3, it's what the ball movie clip, this, ver this variable called vx is equal to 3. Instead of it being 3, paste in shoot x, because this is what we're going to, to change. Then go back up the top of the page. Copy that shoot y. Go to the next time frame action script. And down here, this 50 right here. Now, I don't really think this is the true physics on, on the trajectory of a, of, a, of a ball by any means, but it's, it's a good place for to make a game or something. And in here, paste that, shoot Y. So here we're going to control the Y. And on the other one, we're controlling this variable here, this VX for the ball. Now, this should work. And it should go a little bit further than what it did the last time. Slightly further. Come up to your back on the main the main timeline. And I'm going to take and click here. Hold it and just move it in there so that I don't have an extra keyframe here. And I'm doing that because when I make my changes I want them to be carried over into that to that next frame. Go to the buttons layer, unlock it, make sure you have the frame one selected. I have this around 100% which is alright. Open in my library, library and I'm dragging the shoot button and putting it here. I'm dragging the shoot button again and putting it here. These are just the button instances of that button. And this first one, I'm going to double click on it. I don't want to go that far. Excuse me, I'm going to highlight it. Make sure it's highlighted. Open the properties panel. And under style here, if you don't see it, it'll be under color effects. Click the tint, that's its color. And I'm going to go with that blue, that's a pretty good color. And up in here, type this instance name. It's going to be called D-E-C-R-E, -E, capital D, underscore B-T-N, as in decrease. So copy that. Right-click, copy it. Come down and click on this button. Highlight it. Let's make it some color other than, tint again, other than blue. I don't want it red. Let's make it uh, some combination of red and greenish let's see let's say blue and red now let's make it there that combination there I have a 92 percent here on my tint I have 194 for my red zero for my green and 226 that gives me that purplish color and up here paste in this instance name get rid of the DE and put it I in as an in increase. So I have an increase button and a decrease button. 
block them layers with the new buttons on them and open the action script layer first frame again come down below all this stuff down below this shoot button and right here after this last curly bracket put a couple lines in and type 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 all this in there's the last curly bracket that was there and this is here is what we added so let's just deal with this top part first DECRE that's that button we just made capital D underscore BTN period on press small o capital P equals the function open and close bracket there's the open curly bracket for the function and here's the closed curly bracket and sometimes flash puts a semicolon after the end of this that's that shoot x variable we made we made and we're saying minus equals that means decrement by in this case 0.5 semicolon so every time we press that button we're going to decrement that x factor and shooty as shoot y capital s minus equals 10 so we're going to decrement this by 10 semicolon and we're just going to trace them to see what they look like to make sure they work trace open bracket shoot x close bracket semicolon trace open bracket shoot y close bracket semicolon and there's the close curly bracket for my function here so copy that and then paste it down here change that decrease to increase i n c r e this all stays the same change this to minus make this a plus make this a plus and again get rid of this so now we should be able to try this and at least see some something in our output panel hopefully there's no errors yes and there's my decrement button see it's decrementing you can see it's going from 3.540 to 3 30 2.5 so this one here is re re going down by 0.5 and this one's going down by 10 this should increase 1.5 and 0 then it's going to go 2 and 10 2.5 and 20 so that's working that's real good the next thing we want to do is add some features so I want to move all of this content so click here all in one motion get it like that so you have all of it selected and drag it one frame to the right that gives me a blank frame here select frame 2 open the actions panel and starting here there's 10 variables I want to right click I want to cut them right out of here go back to the timeline select this first frame of the actions panel and paste them in here so now we have our variables in here and because we are using frame labels in here we don't have to worry about jumping to the right spots I'm back on the main timeline and let's test this out for a minute now if I fire it it's set at I think 4 so I think that's going to go somewhere around here and I'm just holding my finger here to make sure to myself and firing it okay and because I didn't press any of these buttons I didn't get any traces so let's increment it there it's up to 4.5 let's go as high as 5 and 70 and wherever it was before it's going to go further this time some of you are liking that let's go back to the 4.4 .4 and the 50 and let's decrement it below so now it should go it's not going to go very far but let's see it and let's go hit the ground at the hundred mark increment a little bit there two and twenty two point five and twenty and 
it's going to come to about here somewhere, I would think. Well, no, that's not bad, guess. Good, that's great. Now we want to make it so that when we, we shoot, when we hit the screen shoot button, that we can hit it over and over again. So select the second frame of the actions panel, open that up, and inside this shoot function, insert a line and type, 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 type. We have two lines. This is the DECRE, capital D underscore button, period, underscore visible, that will turn blue equals false. That means when we press the shoot button, that'll disappear. Semicolon, copy that, paste it on the next line, and change the decrease to increase. So that'll turn that invisible every time we press the shoot button. And naturally, if we make the button, the buttons disappear, we have to bring them back. And we'll bring them back when we complete this this interval, this interval, that's this callback interval. So right here, after we do the clock text, put a line in, and type, type, type these two lines. It's the same thing. This is the decrease button, underscore, capital D, E, C, R, E, underscore, B, T, N, period, underscore, visible equals true. Visible and true will be blue. Copy it paste it down here and make it the increase button and let's just see if that is working for us so I fire it and see I can't change them otherwise you could have changed them and made this thing jump up in the air and I think everything else is working yeah that's incrementing it and we'll go much further Now we have to make a display so we can see the the actual power number instead of having to look at an output panel. Come up to the timeline and select the this frames label layer. Insert a layer. Make sure all the other layers are locked. Select frame one. And you see you can't see the the uh, where anything else is. Let's rate it out here. Pick up your text tool. And I'm going to go with a with red and make a text box right about here. I'm opening my properties panel to look at it. I need dynamic text. I'm happy with 13 points and I'm happy with red and Verdana. And I'm going to put two zeros in here. Zero, zero. And up here, I'm going to give it an instance name. I'm calling it capital P-O-W-E-R, capital power, underscore T-X-T. So it has an instance name. That means we can write code on it. At the same time, I'm going to label this uh, P-W-R, as in power, T-E-X-T, -E text. Still have that first layer selected. Picking up my text tool again, making another box, text box, coming over and making sure this is static text. Everything else about it is the same. And I'm going to write in here capital P O W E R, all capitals, space equals, and pick up my blue, my selection tool, and put that about there. There, they're reasonably lined up. I say reasonably. Okay, let's just move this one step. And I'm quite happy with where that is. You could select it like this and then move it if you want. And it should move in all those frames because that's all the same. All right, so now we have a place to record our powers so we can see it as we adjust them. Let's go back to that lock them layers. Let's go back to that first frame of the action script where our variables are. At the end of this line, I want to add another variable. 
it's called power we're going to do something and what we're going to do is adjust the power and it's a number p-o-w-e-r colon number capital n-u-m-b-e-r turns blue equals four semicolon and this power text text that's that one we just made that this one here this dynamic one so capital p-o-w-e-r underscore t-x-t that was the instance name period t-e-x-t that will turn blue equals power semicolon I mean in this case that'll make it four let's go back to the second frame of the action script and if we're going to make that power variable and that power text we've got to find a spot to put it and we're going to put it both in the decrease button and the increase button so let's do this decrease button first type 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 right after that open bracket open curly bracket it's an if we need an if statement be because we want to limit the power to be no less than one so as we're decreasing it says if that turns purple open bracket capital p o w e r less than equals if it's less than or equal to one close bracket then there's the open curly bracket for the if statement there's the closed curly bracket for the if statement if it's less to equal to or less than one we want to make sure power stays one so p o w e r equals one semicolon and we're just going to trace something to say here trace p o w e r one powers one we're just going to trace that to make when we test it to see if it works in case it doesn't work else that means if it's greater than one i want to do something if it's greater than one then open curly bracket i want to take and decrement it so p o w e r capital p minus equals one that means decrement it semicolon so we're going to decrement it decrement it decrement it starts at four and decrement it until it reaches one and that's as low as we can go and I believe we have to come down here and add another closed bracket so this decrement should work no faults and decrementing 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 okay that looks pretty good see it, see it decremented until it reached one and that's as low as it can go so let's do the same with the increment side I'm back on the frame two of the actions panel. We just did the decrementing up here. So now we're going to do the incrementing. And same spot. So after this first curly bracket, above this shoot X, type, 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 type. Very similar. This will get an F. Now remember, we're going up. Open bracket, capital P O W R. If it's greater than or equal to 10, so we're going to allow it to go to 10. Close bracket. Open curly bracket for my if. We're going to do a trace called max power. T-R-A-C-E, open bracket, quotation marks, max power, spell it, doesn't matter how you spell it. Close quotations, close bracket, semicolon. And if you reach 10, that's as maximum you can get. So power equals 10, semicolon. Here's the closed curly bracket for my if. Else, so if it's not 10, while you're incrementing, incrementing, open bracket, power, plus equals 1, semicolon. That means add 1 to it. And I think we should have a closed curly bracket down here. Now I may have some problems with my curly brackets right now, but let's just see if the increments and decrements work and that we have limits. Okay, increment, increment, increment. I have a maximum of 110. And, and there's my minimum. So I'm happy with them. Now what we got to do is make sure that our text updates when we do these incrementing. So, and decrementing. I'm on the decrement button. And I'm going down right below this shooty. 
get between these two curly brackets, these two closed curly brackets. And I'm going to put some code in here. Type, 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 type. And this line says capital P power underscore text period text that turns blue is equal to the variable power semicolon. So that will update that text for us. Copy and there should be a, another open curly bracket here and a closed curly bracket here. So if we look at them after the trace shooty semicolon there's a closed curly bracket. Then there's an open curly bracket. Another closed curly bracket. That semicolon doesn't have to be there. And then another closed curly bracket. Let's copy this from here to there. Let's copy that. So I got an open curly bracket, this power statement, and this closed curly bracket. Right click, copy it. Come down to here in between these two curly brackets, paste that, and again that should be the same format here, and with a little bit of luck, control, test the movie, no errors, power is 4, if I increment it, it increments, it goes to 4, it's not going to be the same as these because I want these to be numbers from 0 to 10. Okay, that's my maximum power. There's my minimum power. So now let's do one more thing before we do some shooting. Let's go back to scene one. Let's make this about 25%. Make sure all the layers are locked. Select the ball layer. Insert a layer. Drag it down to the bottom. Click on your selection tool, click on your stage, open your properties panel up, and make your stage 700. 700 by 400, okay. See how it stretched there? Now pick up that rectangle tool, pick up some color, and pick up this crazy yellow. Cover that in. Now let's test this. Control, test. And you'll see in a minute why I did that, because I can see how far the ball goes. Okay, watch the, let's pull this over. And let's fire it now at four, it's at four power. And what I want you to do is hold your finger approximately where it disappears. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's go all the way to ten. And if you s go all the way to 10, you can see that it's going to, in my case, go off the stage. But it will still go down and reset everything. And now, let's go down as low as we can. Go 1. And that one barely goes. Now, there's two things on there we don't need, and they're on, they're to do with the frame labels. So if I lock all my layers, unlock this frame labels layer, I don't need that number one anymore, so I can delete that. Go on this one, I don't need that anymore, so I can delete that. Let's get rid of this layer here that has the color on it. We don't need that, so we can just delete that layer. And unlock the clock layer here for a minute. Make sure you have frame 2 selected. And just grab that and put it way up there. We ain't never going to see it. You don't need to see that. Mm, let's just give it a quick test to make sure that's true. There it is. And we can shoot it here. No buttons that we can move it with. do one more test. I'll increment a little bit and I'm sure that's working quite well. Again, I don't think it's in line with physics for a real trajectory, but
but I think you could use it for a game. I hope you learned something from this tutorial, and I hope you use what you learned.